whoa. Like, you know, I, you know, but I, I just felt, I jumped in, and that was, like, really the first time I saw, like, really, you know, besides my mom and my grandmother, like, strong women my age, like, bonding, and, like, it looked like me. Exactly. It looked like me. It made me feel like, even though I didn't join, I was, you know, kind of set back, like, I don't know, but it made me feel like I'm a part of something in this college, like, that I'm, you know, a part of this community of black women that are really strong and powerful and, you know, thinkers and change the world and, you know, it just, it's, it was amazing to see. So, like, that's why I wanted you guys here because it's like, yeah. you know. But what else do you guys do besides sorority? Because I know you, like, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a rough rider. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, you didn't even introduce Wait, me I'm as a rough rider. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you're an honorary. I'm an exposure. Oh, so, oh, oh. Sororities and fraternities. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, wait. I got to stop because she said I was honorary. And I just want you to know I was a rough rider before Hollywood. I know you were. Oh, okay. I didn't even I bring that honorary. up. I okay, didn't bring him up. I'm just saying. Can I, I, can I, like, can I, I introduce I you on that level? I, I came a rough rider on my own bike. You was a rough rider before. Oh, I okay. came a rough rider. Yeah, yeah, I was a rough rider before they made that, um, when you had, the rule was you had to ride a motorcycle yeah. to be yeah. a rough rider. Yeah, I bought one because they told me I had yes. to. I'm like, so, yeah, my little sister, we had, to, Hollywood bought her a bike because she yeah. wanted to be a rough rider and he was from old school. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of young ladies. Oh, she ain't joy, she joy, joy. yes. <laughs> so but no, because, I mean, I think what happened is, <laughs> I think you talked about sororities, which I love my sorority, mm -hmm. but I think that you said you wanted to be in a sorority, but I think that you missed that rough rider is a family. Definitely. And you guys do the same things. Yeah. Okay, just on a different level. I agree. Because I remember all the community service. Mm -hmm. you we know, still do community did, service. You know, as just that, you know, yeah. I wear <laughs> my sobriety jacket. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> but, you know, but um, needless to say, I think that you have to think, when you think about community service and you think about families, sororities, fraternities, mm -hmm. organizations, it's all about what you're giving the youth sometimes, right? But what we forget is, what are we giving other women of our age? Mm -hmm. So I feel that, um, I mean, you know, we work with young young people because we're teachers, guidance counselors, we're now, you know, we're all in the middle school. But I think sometimes just the way we, we present ourselves, mm -hmm. there are sometimes young ladies or women of our age in our 40s, um, that realize that there's a certain standard a black woman should be. So sometimes when they're around us, we notice their change. Mm -hmm. they, we notice a change in them. They may not do the things they normally do because they're around us. So that's a good feeling. That's a good, and that's a good, a good thing. Feeling. Like I say, you guys make women, you know, not really make them, but you like a, make a woman step her game up. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like when I'm around these women of, of color that are educated and smart and talk, have a conversation, you know, or thinkers, mm -hmm. you know, like, then I have to be like, okay, let me get myself together. Let me well, yeah, make sure I'm ready. We're going to talk about why I wasn't introduced as a rough I didn't, first. because we, we talked need, about we this. Need, we need to talk about this. You know this. what, you didn't even want to talk. <laughs> you said <laughs> one word. Well, and I'm well, just Sherry, don't call out. I'm on my show. I didn't, didn't want to talk because you introduced me with I didn't want to say, because we had talked about that. You, you know what? Let me let me take a step back and show much respect to a very, very, very important member of the Westchester Rough Riders, and that is Tanika Williams. She is the wife of our fallen soldier, Hollywood, aka Ty, aka Michael, aka he's had so many Pimpin. 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 aka Pimpin. Pimpin was the house name for him. <laughs> I got him a shirt said Pimpin on the back. I remember yeah. that. So. I wanted to, you know, I'm honored that you're here. Yes. I didn't want to get in, into that conversation because I didn't know, you know, where you were with that. So well, we're talking about community and yeah. what one of the things that we always say is that people didn't know, God referred to him as Hollywood or Ty, mm -hmm. that he was big in the community and he worked a lot with our sorority mm -hmm. to make sure that things, he was um, an engineer, you know, yeah. that was by trade. Um, that's what he went to school for. So it's it's amazing that, you know, you were separating the sororities and fraternities from Rough Rider, which is totally different. But I wanted when we start talking about community, we have to talk about what who's out there mm -hmm. working to make sure that our young women and men are doing the right things. So, you know, I just wanted to stop you for a minute and give you a little credit 
for the West Side is being out there. I, I remember being in the food pantry yes. or just stopping young men or just we, we were old school on um, motorcycle riders or how we would stop the young guys who you be like, you know, where's your helmet? Where's, mm -hmm. your, where, where's your passenger helmet? Do you know what I mean? Just like the old school rules of riding a motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. But like I, I agree the, the bonds that I've made, especially with you. I've known you for adult, the whole entire time I've been a Rough Rider, which now is like 10 years. So I've known you for a long time, Miss Tanika. So that bond that we've built with just you, your family, your friends, because I've gotten to know your, your friends here, your family, and everybody else around us, like that's something that you will never like lose or let go of. And the family and the friendships that you build and sisterhoods, because we call each other sister, yes. call each other sis, College of the fam, like that's. I mean, I'm not from New York, but my family here is Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. My other family, the Williams family. I have like mm -hmm. little small little families that I have here because my whole entire family is in St. Louis. So, mm -hmm. like to have that bond with different people that I'm meeting and networking with women and, you know, bringing them into this platform that I have now, which I'm blessed to have this. So, like, to me, this is like a big deal to have you all here. Mm -hmm. yes, you know yes. this. And we appreciate you inviting us. You're welcome. And I apologize for not honoring you in such a way that you should be honored. Mm -hmm. You're very special to like well, West Chester yeah, River. Yeah. So you know me, I'll be like, oh yeah, it's me. I'll start bawling. I know me. I, I will start crying. I'm gonna cry baby. I'm a mess. So but you're, you're also, you guys also were telling me that you do, you teach. Yes. You work in the, um, is it the Bronx School District? Yes. yes. So what is that like? I mean, with being that all the news that's going on, you know, with the, you know, I don't want to get into, like, the negative things, but, like, mm -hmm. are you worried ever? <laughs> I'm not. That's right. Worried about, like, Like, just, just violence or just anything that you could, you no. know, that would happen? No, I never feel like... I definitely never feel like I go to work and feel uneasy, especially mm -hmm. at my school. I think our school is run very smoothly, and we have a great staff mm -hmm. um, who has great relationships with the students. And oftentimes when things are going to happen, a fight, whatever is going to break out, we usually know in advance because somebody has some type of close relationship with another student and mm -hmm. they'll inform us. And I think we handle things very quickly, swiftly, um, in regards to bring the parents in if we need to have a conflict resolution, somebody grabbing that child and you know really trying to support them. Yeah. I'm not saying anything can't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in a world where it can, but I think that we our school is only like four hundred and sixty something students. So oh, wow. we're not a very large school in comparison mm -hmm. to other schools, but we have an amazing principal yeah. um, and staff who's like really supportive and making sure we do what we need to do to support the kids. I like that conflict resolution because um, when I went home for Christmas and I have, you know, eight nieces and nephews and are all like grade school, you know, um, high you know, going into high school. And my oldest niece, I think she's like 11, mm -hmm. 10 or 11, something like that. And we're sitting in my sister's kitchen, and she's talking about her group of girlfriends, her little group. And she's like, and yeah, and Amy's not even my friend anymore, and she's <laughs> Betsy's friend, and I don't even understand. I don't even, like, she was going through this whole thing. And she was like, you know, what upsets them at that yeah. age to, like, have friends and conflicts and everything. And my sister asked her, well, did you talk to... Like the the counselor or the conflict mm -hmm. person, she's like, yeah, we went and talked to them, and you know, we said, we, I thought we worked it out, and mm -hmm. but she still, you know, she didn't want us the next. But I was like, they do that now, like that really, like, cause a lot of kids don't get that, mm -hmm. you know, they think, oh, you know, well, all these girls are not my friend, and that's when that bullying thing mm -hmm. starts, mm -hmm. and they feel outcast, and even we just keep going and spiraling. But to be able to have a probably a, a, it was a female to come and be like. All right, look, ladies, you know, you're 10 years old, but that's still to talk to them and be like, look, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. Let's, you know, work out this conflict between you girls. You I know? think one of, like at our school, one of the great things our principal does is that sometimes she'll have the kids sit mm -hmm. and work it out themselves. Yeah. Like, y'all need to sit. When y'all come up with a resolution, y'all let me know. Mm -hmm. Y'all let me know. Um, sit and have a conversation. And they'll come back to her. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, being a principal that we have, she'll do that. 
I might sit down with the kids and give them opportunities to really, you know, discuss whatever the issues are, as long as they're willing to. Mm -hmm. Because in as long as they're not being aggressive, because when you're being aggressive, you can't be heard, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, having uh, if they're willing to both work it out, and then we can have that session together. Like that. Mm -hmm. well, and just recognizing that people look at things from a different perspective. And then actually, like hearing. A little ten-year-old girl's voice, mm -hmm. like to me, that was that meant a lot to me as her aunt. Mm -hmm. Like that, she might be going to her conflict with her girlfriends, but there's somebody besides her mother mm -hmm. that can just will listen to her. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. when we were young, you, you had counselors, but it was only when the only time I saw the counselors when you know I had to beat somebody up. And we'd go in there, <laughs> we had to talk about it. They had to call my mom, but I never talked to that girl again. Like mm -hmm. we never. Resolved that mm -hmm. it was just like I'll stay out of her way. She's stay out of my way. We never mm -hmm. like I don't even, even tell you what the problem was, but like we never had that but resolution. I think, I think just working in the school, the kids have to feel comfortable to come to you because if you don't know what's happening, and I mean even if you start talking about bullying, um, you know I just did a workshop with my students at my school like to really identify what's the difference between bullying and conflict, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times bullying is the key word that a lot of people are using but they don't know the difference. And kids yeah. don't know how to identify that it's just a conflict, right? right. She's mad at me, I'm mad at her, and we right. move on. But no, it's bullying, right? Right. And so I think that if kids are not bringing that information to us, sometimes we don't know. And a lot of times, unfortunately, in our community, they be like, I don't want to say anything, I don't want to snitch. Right. Right? And so then, you know, sometimes that becomes the battle where we may have a parent that's upset that nothing was done or resolved, but we like, we didn't know. Like, when you're calling us, this mm -hmm. is the first time we might be hearing about it. Right. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to deal with it on their own. Or yeah, they, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, that's part of the problem. On a, online or things mm -hmm. like that, you know, so. Yeah. We're going to take another break. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, thank you all for, I just, I really enjoyed this. So we're going to take a break. I'm going to come back. I'm going to end up with my so some of my some more of my celebrity birthdays and a little gossip and see what you guys uh, think about Black Panther. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, this is Miss Info, Rough Riders Radio.